pursuant to the provisions of the Cyber Crime Act of 2015, the National Security Advisor, Major General Babagana Munguno, recently convened the seventh meeting of the Cyber Security Advisory Council. The meeting was convened to discuss the implementation framework for the National Cyber Security Policy and Strategy 2021. According to the Office of the National Security Advisor, Council deliberated on the development of a protection plan for critical national information infrastructure. The Council also updated the modalities for upcoming sensitization workshops across seven critical sectors in the economy. But as ONSA, ONSA embarks on the implementation framework and sensitization programs, Nigerians will be wondering how these can help to secure lives. As it stands, thousands of Nigerians have lost their lives. They have become internally displaced or are forced to live in fear due to acts of terrorism, banditry, kidnappings, farmers' headers clashes, and ethno-religious conflicts. Joining us now to brief us on the significance of the National Cyber Security Policy and Strategy 2021 and its place in the nation's security architecture is Ulushola Teniola, the immediate past president of the Association of Telecommunications Companies of Nigeria, ATCON, a member of the Cyber Security Advisory Council. Welcome to the show, Mr. Teniola, and good morning. Thank you for joining us. Well, good morning to you, Dr. Ruben Abati, Tundu, and Rufai. Good morning to your viewers as well. Morning. From Thank you. Morning, well, morning. Very quickly, could you take us through the details of this national cyber security policy and strategy and what the plans are with regard to the sensitization uh, program that is being planned uh, later this year? Yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, the cybersecurity policy and strategy document that was recently launched actually on the 23rd of February 2021 by our President uh, General um, um, uh, Buhari uh, in Abuja literally uh, basically stated that we needed to uh, ensure that our assets and the assets that uh, we are particularly interested in are the digital infrastructure needs to be protected. We need plans to obviously be introduced to protect those uh, assets because they're deemed critical. As you know, we are transitioning into the digital economy. Uh, the digital economy is viewed as the next frontier for Nigeria. Um, and we obviously need to ensure that the infrastructures that are underpinning the digital economy are secure. And these structures are not only uh, ICT structures, but they're also uh, are relating to power, to uh, the health uh, sector, to our financial systems, to the environment, and to other critical uh, systems that need to be inter interworked to ensure that any significant cyber threats are curtailed uh, and that we have our citizens that are not exposed to uh, threats as they try and transact their daily living on, in, on the digital uh, framework that will be defined and built going forward. As you know that we have new technologies that are being introduced, uh, uh, in particular 5G, for instance, and uh, that technology opens up a lot more areas of application services that will obviously need to be encompassed with a cybersecurity plan. So the document itself highlights a strategy of how Nigeria will address these potential threats, which are obviously some are uh, legacy, those that are uh, current and those that will occur in the future, uh, especially with the introduction of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and robotics. Nice to have you back on the show, Mr. Tanyala. What's your assessment of our current <coughs> cyber risk exposure? And also, what, what do you make of news all around the world of ransomware attacks against various governments and corporations? Yes, I think with Nigeria, um, we have a situation where some of our organizations, uh, even in particular government organizations, are still not really connected uh, in a, uh, I would say, a coherent manner. So uh, it's rather mixed. Uh, we do have incidences of business uh, email compromises. Uh, that is, seems to be 
uh, the area that has been targeted heavily uh, by certain segments of our society. Uh, they see that social engineering is an easy way of actually accessing certain systems that, that might be in place. So what we have in terms of our assessment, we're still uh, lower down, the, lower down the, 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 the list of those that are heavily prepared because obviously we need to focus on educating, uh, creating awareness across not only um, those businesses that are impacted but those that interact with our system. So it is work in progress. Um, I truly believe that the workshop that we are starting today, kicking off today actually, over the next two days, uh, starts to address some of the issues in terms of coordination and synchronization with uh, the defense and military apparatus. And then that obviously will spill over to another uh, dialogue with other sectors over the next three months. Uh, as you mentioned, seven sectors actually uh, that we see as priority that we need to actually engage to ensure that there's synchronization of how we address uh, the cyber threats that might appear. And obviously that will improve our uh, readiness and assessments going forward. Right, so uh, good to see you again. Uh, I've, uh, Tenny, I've got a couple of questions and insights for you, but I understand we have to go on a quick break. So we'll go on that break and we'll come back and we get to talk some more. All right, welcome back to the morning show right here. We still have uh, uh, Tenny Allah here, uh, Tenny Allah Lushala. And uh, we were talking about, you know, the cybersecurity framework and, and, and architecture and probably infrastructure, maybe sometime in the future. Uh, so two things. Number one, uh, how do we bring about harmonization? There are a lot of government agencies that still use yahoo.com, and I, I understand there's a .gov.ng. Uh, that's opening up yourself for attacks in the first place, and that's not sustainable in this time and age. Uh, secondly, how do we use local content you know, to drive cybersecurity conversations. Yeah, because, yeah, we can't keep outsourcing, you know, cybersecurity challenges when we have viable software developers and all of that. So how can we use, you know, the need for local content, you know, to drive the inclusion of software developers and all of that? Because if the architecture and the framework doesn't include them, then it's not sustainable in the long run. And correct me if I'm wrong, I hear governments still pay large contracts, you know, uh, for cyber security updates to foreign companies and all of that. And it's quite appalling, you know, when you have a country where there are a lot of Nigerians that can do the job. Yeah, thanks for that, for that Rufai. Um, the first one really is really around planning and planning and planning. Uh, really, we need to have a discussion uh, and a continuous dialogue with government to ensure that the various MDAs are seeing the same plan and really reading from the same uh, script. Uh, and really what we have at the moment, we have an autonomy right now in government uh, that has created obviously these silo approaches to addressing uh, the digitization, the digitalization and possibly transformation going forward. And we need to have a harmonized plan. I think these sensitization workshops that we're beginning, as uh, I previously indicated, is a start. And I think we need that continuous dialogue. Uh, I think that your question around local content is, is a poignant one. You're right. I think that we have to start to uh, trust that the local talent that exists in the ICT sector, uh, in other sectors, are able to produce the type of software the type of solutions, and to a certain degree, the frameworks that are idiosyncratic to uh, the way we uh, operate in, in Nigeria. I think as a starting uh, point, we do obviously need to work with foreign uh, organizations because we will have to interconnect our systems to foreign systems as well. Uh, so actually uh, learning from their past experiences uh, learning from some of the security firms out there that have had to deal with some of these challenges is, is a good point, but I think it shouldn't end there. You're right, we need to have the transfer of knowledge to uh, local entities to ensure that we are also contributing to the burgeoning digital economy. And then finally, I think that the issue around artificial intelligence is very important. Uh, we know that at the moment artificial intelligence 
uh, is biased. Uh, it depends on those that have developed the algorithms. Uh, we need to, as Nigerians, also engage in that uh, process so that we develop our own artificial intelligence algorithm. So yes, uh, we will continue to uh, push uh, the local content uh, part and piece to ensure that we have a structure and a framework that is Nigerian-centric. Well, uh, you know, Taniola, a couple of issues. The point about Nigerian uh, ministries, departments, and agencies are still using Yahoo.com. I find that uh, very strange because under a mobile agency, uh, who was Nigeria's first minister of communications technology, she actually, you know, uh, set up a portal for Nigeria. And every ministry, department, and agency of government was supposed to migrate into that as part of an attempt by a ministry at the time uh, to ensure uh, cyber security. The question we should ask is, what then happened? Why is it that that was abandoned uh, after she uh, left the uh, office? Now, I wanted to ask you a more pointed question about the fact that cyber security is not just about preventing hacking and all of that and the integrity of this cyberspace in Nigeria. It's also supposed to, that policy is also meant to promote economic activities e-commerce, financial inclusion. So isn't there a contradiction in terms as you begin this, your sensitization workshops? I guess one issue that will come up will be, okay, we say we're doing cyber security, we're promoting e-commerce, and yet we have suspended Twitter, one of the major tools for e-commerce, for interaction, for you know, social, of technological uh, innovation for more than 100 days. And yet the government is still giving excuses and the cost, even in business terms, remains very high. What's your opinion? Uh, thanks for that, Dr. Ruben Abati. Um, it's really difficult to get the balancing act. And what do I mean by this balancing act? On the one hand, the cybersecurity industry is a large industry. Um, since the 1990s, we've seen a, a tremendous growth in uh, the cyber tools development, uh, the awareness development areas uh, to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars that it's worth on a per annum basis. So the cyber, cyber security as an ecosystem is, is, is large uh, and it's growing. Uh, and the, the global uh, trend is that it will only increase with the further adoption of mobile devices, especially smart devices. Uh, and, the, and the vulnerabilities that comes along with adopting those devices. So Nigeria being the largest telecommunications market in Africa is a prime uh, landscape for us to also contribute and develop our cybersecurity tools uh, and frameworks. So that's one point. So it is potentially a, a, an opportunity to generate revenue from that by creating a cybersecurity ecosystem in Nigeria. The other part really is uh, there is always going to be this uh, urge to ensure that our citizens uh, are safe online. Even uh, there's a recognition that online abuse, especially uh, 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 towards gender issues, uh, children as well, uh, and other types of crimes are, are on the internet. Uh, there's the dark side of the internet that we want to try and avoid. And that includes hate speech, fake news, uh, deep fake, uh, et cetera, as technology uh, develops as we go forward. So we need to have a framework as well to restrict uh, the bad side of the internet to ensure that those that want to continue to produce, uh, live their lives uh, uh, digitally uh, are done, uh, are able to do it in a safe environment. So there's always going to be this balance. So I don't want to speak too much on the Twitter issue. I think that will eventually be addressed uh, because there are other platforms as well that obviously have rules uh, and procedures as how they engage with their communities. So uh, this is going to be a journey to ensure that the, uh, the introduction of these tools and the way and manner that Nigerians interact is done in a safe manner uh, deemed by government, obviously, and civic society going forward. Thank you. Right. Um, what's your position on the telecoms um, shutdown in Zamfara State and 13 local governments in Katsina State and generally as a mechanism for combating banditry and terrorism, which is ostensibly why it's happening? 
You, you know, there's uh, many ways to skin a cat, and I, I don't want to go against what the uh, security agencies have done in terms of Zamfara and maybe the adjoining states, but uh, the telecoms industry takes uh, uh, its um, guidance and obviously instructions from the federal government, especially when it concerns anything to do with national security. Uh, one way of actually addressing uh, high rates of crime or where there's uh, a challenging issues is to obviously break communication. I mean, uh, that's always been the case. Uh, before uh, mobile phones were introduced into society, uh, there would have been other means of communicating. Uh, but now that they're reliant on uh, the devices and the technology, if the security apparatus deems it fit that they need to actually infiltrate with uh, uh, the organizations, then one way of them is to try and uh, disconnect them uh, from able, being able to communicate. But it's only one way, as I said, there's many ways to skin a cat. Um, I think going forward, uh, improved synchronization of information, intelligence information across, uh, not only uh, within the security apparatus, but those local communities will improve uh, the way and manner they can actually uh, address uh, the challenges that they're currently facing right now. Right. So, uh, you know, do, do all of this engagement you are going to be having, will it include, you know, cybersecurity space in Nigeria in the, in, in the era of 5G? Will it include that? And, and I also want to talk about spectrum, you know, spectrum in general in Nigeria and, you know, cybersecurity conversations around spectrum. Yeah, uh, I mean, in terms of... Uh uh, the the infrastructure um, definitely 5G is a technology uh, just like 4G, 3G, 2G, and in the past 1G. Uh, so we're addressing the current issues and obviously addressing the foreseeable issues. 5G is at our doorsteps, um, and we need to ensure that its adoption, its deployment, uh, its impact on the current cyber security landscape isn't significant to overwhelm us. As I said earlier uh, in an introductory statement on this program, uh, 5G will enable other services, other applications, in cases, uh, in terms of the telecommunication space, use cases that are new. Uh, so it brings a new dimension to the current situation we find ourselves in. So yes, uh, 5G will be considered Spectrum has always been a scarce resource, a resource in uh, Nigeria and in, across Africa in, in general because obviously uh, in, Nigeria, in Nigeria in particular we rely heavily on, on wireless uh, communication and not fixed line communication. So yes, there will be a discussion around uh, how we can improve on the fixed line infrastructure as well as the wireless infrastructure. Uh, the case of Spectrum uh, being a, a security issue that has been addressed in terms of health issues, uh, but in terms of how we actually utilize it to ensure that it's used uh, for good rather than bad would be uh, another uh, a discussion, not only uh, during this two-day workshop that we're starting today, but in subsequent ones going forward over the next three months. Well, um, we'd like more details about the sensitization workshop uh, that you say is starting today over the next three months. What's the structure? Who are the participants? Uh, what are the locations? Mm -hmm. And more importantly, I hear that there are cyber security uh, companies in Nigeria involved in what they call cyber security solutions. Are they part of it? And what's the quality of the interface between those companies and uh, government? Yes, I can tell you, uh, Dr. Ruben Abati, that we will be talking about uh, uh, identifying uh, critical national uh, information infrastructure. Uh, we'll also be uh, describing uh, fully uh, the CNII and also making or uh, drawing up plans uh, to protect and mitigate against uh, threats against our critical national information infrastructure. Uh, the outcome really is to have a dialogue the outcome really is to synergize uh, our, our plans. Uh, remember that uh, you are right, there are various types of organizations 
who are trying to uh, play in this field. It's a very dynamic space. Um, they will probably be involved, but what we didn't want was a, a large, massive hall. So we are breaking them down into sectors. They will be focused to try and address specific issues uh, uh, in a sector. And in the case of today's, it's the military and defense. So it's pretty wide. I can't name names of those that will be participating, but I can assure you that uh, uh, the Office of the uh, National Security Advisor will obviously give the media the necessary press brief as to the outcomes uh, after the deliberation. And well, it's happening in Abuja. That's why I'm in Abuja. Thank you. Well, we'd like to thank you very much, uh, Lushola Teniola, uh, for joining us this morning. And we wish you all the best uh, with the sensitization workshop.